Good day, everyone. This is Dar Sato, the most handsome, yekable Africa husband. And I have beside me my most beautiful, pepperocious babe. Good day, everyone. On today's show, I'm Jaquette Olu and Cetro, And you're welcome back to Cetro's Vlog Family. If you're not a part of this family, please subscribe and press the notification bell. I want to thank those that have been liking, sharing, tweeting. Please don't stop. And a big thank you goes to all our supporters, our patrons on this channel. You can be part of our patrons for as low as $3 per month. So it all happened that... Uh, President Rajolina of Madagascar was granted an exclusive interview on France 24. And guess what it was? Before we dive into that interview, I really want to state it clearly here. Because we've observed that numerous of our videos are being taken down. And as such, I would like to see what will happen to this video because I'm bringing it exactly the way it was on France 27. And the video... France 24. France 24 news. And the video was not deleted there. So this video is going to give you an insight into what it takes for an African to develop the key that the world is waiting for because it is now very obvious that the external influences do not want any developmental progress in Africa. And as such, we just have to what? Stay together, stick together, and watch each other's back in Africa. I was trying to say you should not... You should not be so uh, shouty or aggressive or whatever about it. Because At this point, I really don't care. At this point, I really don't care because the, uh, you can't be with one hand be saying that it's freedom of expression and the other act of yours is like you are killing down the channels that are really expressing out the truth. I tell you, if you don't share this video, the people I don't want to mention, they have done a whole lot to make sure that such news like this doesn't fly to much people. So, how, do, how do we justify that? So please, let's watch the video. Bonjour. Un plaisir. Hello. It is a pleasure to be your guest, particularly in times of war against the coronavirus. So we're going to talk about what you've called this war against COVID-19 on top of lockdowns, face masks and distancing measures. Madagascar has set itself apart by its use of COVID organics, a remedy based on Artemisia, a plant with proven therapeutic effects in the fight against malaria. You've already sent it to a number of African countries, but do you have proof in Madagascar that this treatment works, that it has actually cured people suffering from COVID-19? Well, we have indeed introduced this uh, remedy, which contains Malagasy medicinal plants. This is something that we are used to in Madagascar. 80% of the population uses herbal remedies. This being said, COVID organics is, needless to say, a preventive and curative remedy against COVID-19. It works really well, and it is the result of research carried out by the Malagasy Institute of Applied Research, which has the status of a regional research center as part of the African Union organization. I would like to clarify that IMRA is a medical, pharmaceutical, and training center created in 1957 by Professor Ratsimamanga an emeritus African scientist. You mentioned evidence. Earlier, I said we are at war. As you well know, the global death toll from COVID is nearly 300,000. Can we really afford to disregard a potential treatment, particularly in times of war? What evidence can we provide at this point? Well, our patients are healing. Out of 171 infections in Madagascar, as many as 105 have healed. That's a majority of COVID-19 patients who have healed. You mentioned evidence. What I can tell you is that the patients that have healed have taken no other product than COVID organics. To summarize, we are seeing a clear improvement 
in the health of patients treated with this remedy called Tembavi CVR. And this only 24 hours after the remedy was first administered. The patients are found to heal 7 to 10 days after receiving the remedy. It is a natural remedy, a non-toxic and non-invasive remedy. Nevertheless, Mr. President, not everyone is convinced by the evidence that you're talking about. And it's not just anyone who's skeptical, the African Union, ECOWAS, and especially the WHO, the WHO's Africa office, have in the past few days repeatedly warned against the illusion of a miracle cure. Not only does the WHO have doubts, as as to the effectiveness of COVID organics, but it is also worried about the possible side effects for those who take this tonic. Well, you are referring to Dr. Moetzi's warning against the use of COVID organics. I have a question for you. Wasn't there another medication called Mediator that received all of the necessary marketing authorizations? My question for you is, how many people did Mediator kill? You're all familiar with the statement by professors Bernard Debré and Philip Even. These professors introduced over 58 medications manufactured by prestigious laboratories. And according to them, not only do these drugs have zero healing effect, but they're also dangerous, if not lethal. These drugs have been and are being marketed in Africa. And I have never heard Dr. Moetzi or WHO issue statements banning the use of these drugs. This being said, we use a tonic, a decoction. In other words, we brew medicinal herbs in boiling water in order to extract the active ingredients. That's our traditional medicine. It is famous and recognized because it works. There's a lot of talk about Artemisia with this remedy. You've put a question to me. Well, I have a question for you. What if this remedy had been discovered by a European country instead of Madagascar? Would people doubt it so much? I don't think so. I can tell you that uh, those Malagasy patients who have received the remedy, whether you call it Tambavi CVO or COVID organics, these patients are all the proof you need that it works. Well, on this point, let's, let's take France's example. The National Drug Safety Agency very recently published a warning against buying Artemisia-based products, stating that their therapeutic properties are, and I quote this agency, false and dangerous. Do you get the impression that these doubts or these suspicions of, let's say it plainly, quackery, come from Western countries or maybe Western and pharmaceutical lobbies. You savez, um you may have heard or seen the statement by Professor Montagnier. After all, he was the recipient of the Nobel Prize in Science of Medicine. And according to him, Artemisia is a way to cure the coronavirus. So that's one thing. And you may have also seen the research by Professor Tu Yu Yu in China. Professor Tu Yu Yu has been able to extract artemisinin from artemisia. So I don't get it. Why so many questions? Why all this trouble? The problem with COVID organics is not the formulation. We're not talking clinical studies that pretended not to know. People are bad-mouthing this product, Tambavi CVO, yet all it does is save lives. It's a good thing. 
In this battle, they are trying to slow us down. They're trying to discourage us, stop us even from moving forward. Who are you referring to, Mr. President? Well, no one will stop us from moving forward, not a country, not an organization. Who am I referring to? Well, you refer to a number of organizations, including the World Health Organizations. Well, we in Madagascar have our own tonic. We are a sovereign country. We seek to help our people not become victims of the pandemic. No, quite simply, what everyone is asking for is the clinical trials. You cited IMRA, the Malagasy Institute of Applied Research. But for the time being, this institute has only carried out clinical observations and not clinical trials. So when will they be carried out and who will carry these trials out? Alors, il ne faut pas confondre... Clinical trials and clinical observations are two different things. When it comes to Tambavi CVO, the status of Tambavi CVO is that of an enhanced traditional remedy, which warrants a validation system that is different than that of a drug. We are not conducting clinical trials, but rather clinical observations in line with guidelines from WHO. So we have conducted these clinical observations. There's a study protocol to observe the impact of the remedy on the state of health of COVID patients. We have fully complied with universally recognized standards of ethics for clinical research and studies. But last Thursday you announced that clinical tests were soon going to be carried out. Is this no longer the case? Now, there are two different aspects. Let's not mistake one for the other. Several protocols have been set up. Firstly, like every other country in the world that is fighting the pandemic, we are under pressure to find a treatment for our patients. And when Professor Raoult made an announcement saying hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin worked, we used the treatment he recommended, and for that, I wish to thank him. Without the solution he proposed, we would not have been able to save the first victims of the coronavirus. This being said, we all know that high-dose administration of both drugs produces side effects and adverse effects. This treatment presented risks of toxicity, which warrants greater clinical monitoring. Regarding the second protocol that we adopted, that protocol was for Tambavi CVO. I'm referring to the tonic or decoction that I referred to earlier. We follow the principles of clinical study and observation as well as WHO guidelines. The vast majority of patients who were treated with this remedy are all of the proof you need that it works. No one has died in Madagascar. No one has died. All we have done is heal our patients. Earlier, you referred to clinical trials. Needless to say, we have a third protocol. I'm referring to a clinical trial on an injectable drug that is different than the remedy we are currently making available. This is part of scientific cooperation efforts at a regional level, as well as with physicians and scientists in the U.S. and, needless to say, in the Indian Ocean. The Malgasy Institute of Applied Research, which you mentioned earlier, won't reveal the exact ingredients of COVID organics, because uh, one imagines that this institute doesn't want to be overtaken by a competitor before it can secure a patent. But many Malagasis from the country's interior don't have access to this cure, so, uh, so that they can produce it themselves and protect themselves. Can you tell us, um, other than Artemisia, what are the two other plants that make up COVID organics? Needless to say, COVID organics is mostly made up of medicinal plants, mostly Artemisia, 
to the tune of 62%. The remedy also contains other medicinal plants which are endemic to Madagascar. This information cannot be disclosed at this time. We are still awaiting results. And we will initiate clinical monitoring at a regional level. We have our own formulation. And as I said before, we are working together with the Malagasy Institute of Applied Research. And there is a product I would like to show you. It's called Medecasol, currently manufactured by Bayer. Bayer is a laboratory that makes a hundred or so different medications. But this product is the result of research together with IMRA. This medication was developed in 1961. I'm simply trying to tell you that African and Malagasy scientists should not be underestimated. We are here. Questions abound, yes. But what is the problem with COVID organics? Really? Could it be that this product comes from Africa? Could it be that it's not okay for a country like Madagascar, which is the 63rd country, poorest country in the world, that it's not okay for such a poor country to have come up with Tambavi that can help save the world? Remember, we are at war. But in this war, this war cannot be won by military might or economic power. It is God who gave us these medicinal plants to help our country and help the rest of the world against this disease. Mr. President, we only have a few seconds left, but it's an important uh, question. You demand that France hand back the scattered islands, the four islands off the coast of Madagascar. A mixed commission was set up a year ago, uh, but in October, Emmanuel Macron visited one of these four islands and said this This is France. Do you think that by June 26, the date that will mark the 60th anniversary since Madagascar's independence, a solution can be found between your two countries? That is indeed what we are hoping for. We hope that a solution can be found so that these islands can be restituted to Madagascar. Now, the joint committee was supposed to hold its second meeting at the end of March. This meeting was postponed because of the coronavirus. But I have faith. I have confidence in our ability to come up with a quick solution that will meet our request for restitution. Do you mean restitution or rather a co-management agreement with France? In a few seconds, quickly. We are claiming sovereignty over these islands. Restitution is the order of the day. So after seeing this, dear Africans and dear global friends that are really for the truth, global friends that are really for the truth, please, uh, we want to have your comments. (laughs) I was so shocked when uh, President uh, uh, the Magadasta president said, what is actually the problem? Is it because it's just a poor country like Madagascar that discovered this that's why we are facing if, uh, this. The other, the other option you have, they said over 700,000 persons' possibility of dying is there. Whereas this one, they've not even recorded any, any particular death. And all of a sudden, I know that they are looking for this country to record deaths. And in the next video, we'll be showing you something that is coming up. We don't want to talk about it now. Watch out in the next video. We'll tell you the next plan of action against Madagascar. So that's just it today. We just have to keep it calm. Let's have your comments. Spread this news, please. If you love the truth and you want to save the world, like, tweet, retweet, share on Facebook and Instagram. So till we come your way next time, we remain the searchers. Bye-bye.